name is Alex Wander, CEO founder of the Wander Tactical Knife Company located in Italy. The, 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 the company was founded by me and Gray Musdino, my teammate. Uh, we are here at the Blade Show 2018. We are so happy to be here. And this is the, the product we, are, we brought here th this, this year. Uh, this is one, uh, our, our folder, our new folder, which is made with two titanium liners. And it's a kind of axis lock that works vertically. What we wanted to do is taking out all the weakest parts that you can find in a usual axis lock. And uh, we shape two independent rocker arms into each liner that works independently moving this part and the locking mechanism itself. So it's easy to be clean, it works in every condition. And you also, if you might need it, you, we have a locking pin that you can draw all through the parts and makes the blade almost fixed. Almost. Sometimes we say, if you want a fixed blade, buy a fixed blade. Thank you very much. Okay, guys, I got to say, Alex is a really uh, nice guy. I appreciate um, him showing us his knife. If you take a look at this, uh, you got a couple interesting features. Uh, it's got two thumb bobs, which I think is uh, a pretty neat. It's a, it's a good um, mechanical uh, device, and you could make out the hole that that extra pin fits in. And uh, above the pivot, um, at about the uh, one o'clock position, is the um, lock bar that's uh, similar to a um, axis lock. So we haven't really had uh, some uh, deep uh, knockdown uh, knife talk in a while, so. What I want to do is I want to go over uh, some of uh, the features of this mechanism. I have to, happened to walk by and saw this knife, and I was uh, certainly impressed about how rugged it is. This is one tough uh, knife that um, you'd want to carry into the bush. The blade's real thick, and it's heavy. And I, I agree with Alex. It's probably not the uh, prettiest um puppy in the litter but they make them uh, with a concern to be strong and um, putting a pin in there uh, certainly uh, just about turns it into a straight knife all these folders want to be so well uh, our mechanism uh, is about as strong as uh, a straight knife but you know take that with a grain of salt but his with putting that pin in plus it's got the uh, lock bar and a fairly good sized pivot it uh it is a pretty strong uh knife i one drawback would be it looks like you buy this pin separate or maybe the well it comes separate uh i wish they would have some way attaching it to the knife so you didn't have to carry it around in your pocket uh Alex is very friendly. He said uh, that I could come back later and he would uh, take a knife apart for me and get me uh, a chance to uh, see how it really worked inside and get some pictures. Unfortunately, I got so uh, busy running around the blade show, I never made it back to him. But that's not going to stop us because we're all students of knife mechanisms and uh, we all are interested in having some fun with it. So uh, first off, I want to I want to talk about the unique feature of this knife, um, they make the springs for the lock bar out of the liners. I think he mentioned that they use titanium liners. And you could see with uh, uh, this diagram that I drew um, that um, the, uh, the liners are formed out of uh, titanium. Now, a lot of knives use this, certainly a liner lock, uh, the classic example of making a spring out of a liner. 
uses this technique. But this uh, is different. The uh, bias force is going up and down instead of uh, right to left like in a liner lock. And, of course, uh, both liners are the same. Uh, there's a right and left uh, spring created uh, by that. And uh, these drawings are sort of schematic, but if you really want good drawings, you can go, go buy my book, okay? Uh, this, this is a YouTube video, so I'm just going to knock this out. But this uh, is clear enough to, to show uh, the concept. And right here, the um, depiction is for the uh, lock bar. It's the uh, same concept as the uh, axis uh, lock, or the axial pin, uh, certainly popularized by the Benchmade knives. Uh, I don't have it exactly drawn at the 1 o'clock position. I'm just sort of knocking out, but that's the idea. This uh, arrow shows how it moves up and down, and uh, that's the concept. So if this were uh, depicted uh, with the uh, blade fully closed, um, that pin probably sits uh, in a little bit of a recess, and that is what probably assists the... Uh, the knife is staying closed, and just like um, the same concept as the uh, axis lock, uh, the spring force could be easily overcome uh, by opening the blade. The pin will go up, and the uh, small amount of spring force will allow the blade to be released, and it can be rotated to the open position. So here we are in the open position, and uh, the uh, lock bar a lot, or locking pin, whatever you want to call it, will come down uh, likely into a notch and lock up the knife. So there it is in the fully open position and locked. The spring is holding it in. And now the configuration of this um, uh, cavity that it goes into, this recess, is different from the, the uh, closed position. So now in order to unlock the knife, you have to physically take your thumb and push the lock bar up to release the knife. And that is uh, similar to uh, the way a axis lock would work. Uh, the difference being that in this knife, you push the lock bar up, and an axis lock, you pull it rearward. And this picture just kind of shows the hole where the uh, pin will be. Uh, and that separate pin is really going to make for uh, a very strong uh, lockup. And there's probably a stop pin arrangement in there. I didn't really see a stop pin uh, on some of the pictures. Unfortunately, uh, taking pictures of the inside of a knife from the uh, outside of the knife, you, you can't get a whole lot of detail. But uh, it, could be, it could look like some of that. Maybe they don't have a stop pin. I don't know. So the difference between this knife and an axis lock is instead of having this notch here uh, where um, the lock bar is going to go up and down, this way you have the axial pin going forward to lock the knife, and it goes up a ramp. And that, that ramp will have uh, sort of a wedging effect, and uh, the blade will lock up. And this is sort of... Uh, a picture of um, an axis lock with uh, showing the actual pin going forward, wedging up the ramp. And uh, the bias force for the uh, pin is not the uh, liners, but it's what a lot of people call an omega spring. It's sort of a bent leaf spring. And that biases this pin to go forward or uh, wedge against uh, the back of the tang, and uh, that'll get the knife uh, in a locked position, in the fully open position. I took uh, several pictures. I uh, just want to run through them. Um, took several trying to, hopefully they'll reveal what's going on. This looks like the uh, top of the knife. And we're looking at the uh, lock bar, and the blade is probably in the 
uh, partially open position. I think I might see a, sort of a, a depression there that this lock bar fits in, or maybe not. Can't tell for sure from the picture. Uh, this looks like the uh, belly of the knife and the fully open position. Uh, we're looking at the flipper and just rear the flipper. It looks like there's a depression. That's probably where the lock bar goes uh, in the closed position to help uh, bias the blade to stay closed. Uh, more of the same. And this looks like the top of the knife with the two thumb bobs. And from what I said about uh, having a stop pin, I can see one of the thumb bobs is used as a stop pin. So I guess that's the stop pin. And that's a pretty uh, strong uh, stop pin system because uh, I have tested uh, knives that use uh, the thumb bob for a stop pin. It's really, uh, they're really pretty strong. So uh, that's sturdy. And of course, having these two thumb bobs, you can really get a grip uh, on this large area with your thumb uh, to flip the blade open, even though apparently the blade has a flipper also. Uh, and this is the blade uh, partially open. Um, it reveals the uh, hole, certainly, uh, that the um, extra pin goes through. And you can see the, um, the lock bar here uh, it's in a uh, slot that it travels in, and the slot uh, basically goes up and down. And that's how the uh, mechanism achieves lockup. Okay, now we got the theory. Let's um, correlate the drawings back to the pictures and uh, see if we can have some fun with these. So this is the top of the knife, and I think you could perhaps uh, make out um, the springs. Uh, we're looking inside and we can see the uh, right liner and the right spring and it's pushing down on the uh, lock bar. And uh, this is just uh, the same, different little uh, view. And then uh, just another view. And uh, now uh, we're going to put this arrow in here and uh, so you can really see it uh, back a little bit further. You see there's a spacer. There's no uh, back strap on this knife. And now we turn it uh, other side. Now we're looking at the left liner and it looks uh, exactly the same. You can see that line going up. Uh, that is the spring cut out of the uh, titanium liner and it's pushing down on the lock bar which will um, bias it to go into uh, the notch uh, in the back of the tang and lock the blade up and uh, in case you can't see it so well there's the arrow okay uh, you've been such a great audience I'm going to um, use some better drawings out of the um, book one and book two. Uh, I had to put the axis lock in book two because there were so many new mechanisms that use it, like the uh, Benchmade uh, APB and Barrage. So uh, take a look here. Here's the um, shot of the mechanism here. Um, you could see the um, axial pin uh, rides up on the uh, uh, back of the tang, the um, o omega spring. There's a stop pin, the pivot, um, pretty uh, self-explanatory. And um, this is uh, the uh, shot outside the liner that was uh, inside. And you see the omega spring and the uh, axial pin. And uh, that's the, the same drawing. Uh, with the liner off. Uh, there's a stop pin um, and the uh, axial pin goes forward whereas the uh, winder knife the uh, pin goes up and down. And here's exploded view, the uh, back of the tang, the axial pin, you can see the omega spring, the liner has the oval slot that the pin travels 
forward and back in again as opposed to the wanderer knife that goes uh, in a vertical direction uh, both sides are the same the uh, omega spring on uh, both sides uh, and uh, liners with the uh, pin now th there's an interesting mechanism by Jeff Freeman where he uses a locking pin a similar uh, concept but this pin is internal it uh, it's not uh, uh, removable but you deploy it by uh, by pushing it in so it's a lot more convenient uh, you use it anytime and it's extremely uh, strong uh, this is a, a button lock so you can see in this picture the button lock is above or a little more forward than the locking pin and that locking pin is locks a scallop it doesn't go all the way through the tang like the uh, wander knife this is a picture of the Benchmade uh, APB uh, assist. You can see the uh, axis lock. And this is another uh, mechanism using the axis lock with a, uh, a safety lock involved. Uh, this is the APB uh, automatic. And you can see that the uh, mechanism contains an actual pin. And these newer mechanisms uh, modify the actual pin. There's sort of a, a flat facet on it that it slides on. Now, this is the SOG uh, arc lock. And the concept is very similar, only the uh, actual pin is on the um, uh, on a swinging arm that has, a, it has an omega spring. Uh, we're going to talk about knife testing. And this I went over, uh, this, these were done by Benchmade. This is a, a test uh, machine. The blade is held in a special vise. There's a piston comes down the back, pushes on the blade until something breaks. And what breaks in the axis uh, mechanism is uh, any of them four things, the pivot, the liners, the axial pin, um, or the blade. So I think it's a very well-balanced uh, mechanism because the, it doesn't have a weak link. This is showing uh, the deformity of the axial pin. Uh, there shows how the, the liners uh, deform or break. And this is a catastrophic failure of the blade where the tang actually uh, broke. So again, I think it's a very, w not only well designed uh, mechanism, but I think it's the strongest uh, mechanism there is. Uh, compared to a liner lock or a lock back, etc. So it's, uh, it's been tested. They got the numbers. Uh, and this is uh, the final chapter of book one that goes over uh, knife testing. And that's a uh, Benchmade barrage. Uh, you can see that it has a uh, axis lock and the slot that the pin travels uh, forward and back in and above it is the picture of uh, the uh, axis pin with the uh, omega spring uh, with the handle off and this is a benchmade barrage and it's a assisted opener and you can close it with one hand although it's pretty difficult because the spring has constant bias. So you should be asking, if you're a good student of knife mechanisms, what is the strongest lock? Is it the Benchmade? Is it this Wanderer? Is it the SOG? Uh, they all have similarities. What is stronger? And I right now wouldn't venture to guess. But I would guess this, that the Wanderer knife with the uh, additional locking pin inserted, that's the strongest knife of them all because it pretty close to turns it into a straight blade. So I uh, hope you enjoyed uh, a little knife talk and hope you uh, continue to enjoy uh, your knife collecting and uh, using knives. Thank <laughs> you.